Next question, a 65 year old male with a history of diabetes and hypertension coming with a diplopia and the squint. So, we are having diplopia, we are having squint, we are having diabetes and hypertension. So, basically, uh, we are having the paralytic variety of squint because why? Because this is having diplopia and diplopia is more common in the paralytic squints though it can be in the non-paralytic variety also and I am having uh, two important causes of the uh, paralysis that is diabetes and hypertension are already there. Now to confirm this they are saying that uh, the secondary deviation is more than the primary deviation. So if secondary deviation is more than primary deviation you are sure that this is the case of the paralytic squint. Pseudo squint may there will be and in the restrictive squint may basically here I will have no diplopia okay. So, I will have no diplopia in the pseudo squint. Comitant squint may and the restrictive squint may we can have but they are less common. So, basically secondary deviation and primary deviation you have to uh, understand that primary deviation will be equal to secondary deviation in cases of non-paralytic squint while the secondary deviation is more than primary deviation in cases of paralytic squint. Now, you must be having some confusion between primary and secondary deviation. I know a lot of uh, students have this problem. Now, let us discuss once again what is primary and what is secondary. Primary means it is a deviation of the eye deviation of the squint eye. So, whatever is the amount of squint present in the eye that is called as the primary deviation. Secondary deviation is the deviation obviously uh, of the normal eye. Now, you will say why normal eye is deviating? It is under the cover. So, we are putting the normal eye under a test. We are covering it and this test is called as the direct cover test. This is called as the direct cover test then we are seeing the deviation and that is called as the secondary deviation. Let us see how suppose this is the primary uh, deviation we are can see the squint and uh, we can see the 40 degree esotropia. So, 40 degree will be the primary deviation and then this is the normal eye. I want to see the deviation here so I am putting it under the cover and um, we have covered this eye. Now, when I cover this normal eye we are forcing this eye to take the central fixation, okay. We are forcing this eye to take the central fixation and when I force this eye to take the central fixation, it has to move in the direction of action of paralyzed muscle. Like if there was a esotropia, that means this eye was having the lateral rectus palsy. That is why we were having the inward squint. Now, in order to take the central fixation, it has to move out and it has to move this paralyzed muscle. Now, paralyzed muscle cannot move and therefore, it will try to draw the energy from the brain. But brain says that, sorry, I do not have any partiality because we follow Haring's law. Like, it is just like parents. Parents says that, see, if one child um, is asking for something, I have to give to both. Okay. So, Haring's law says that equal and simultaneous energy has to be given to the yoke muscles. So, if I am giving the energy to the left lateral rectus, I have to give the energy to the right medial rectus also. And this lateral rectus was having the palsy while medial rectus is normal. So, obviously, this will move more. When this will move more, therefore, I will get more of secondary deviation and that is the reason why secondary deviation is always more than primary deviation in cases of paralytic squint. Now, why it is equal in non-paralytic? Obviously, see, non-paralytic means there is no palsy. No palsy means no ocular limitation. So, this means whether it is a primary deviation or it is a secondary deviation, both will have equal. So, primary is equal to secondary, non-paralytic, secondary is more in paralytic.